I'd like to quote the words of another wise woman, Gloria Steinem. She once said, if you'll excuse the strong language for this time of morning, the truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. She also said, women may be the one group that grows more radical with age. I think she's right there. There's no doubt we've come a long way since gaining the right to vote at the turn of the 20th century. Equal work for equal pay, on paper at least, in 1969, and paid parental leave in 2010. But we still have a long way to go with the gender pay gap at its widest since records began, as you would all know, at 18.8%. Women's underemployment more than double from the time that I started at university in 1985. And the current backlash against this tsunami, which we call the fourth wave of feminism. It's easy to get, as Steinem said, pissed off about all this. But frankly, I'm delighted that centuries-old power structures are being challenged. Let's face it, the only reason there's a backlash is because those with power are afraid of losing it. We should be celebrating because this is a measure of our success. Make no mistake, women's empowerment is the zeitgeist. There's a tremendous amount of excitement around what's possible in the years ahead. And I'd like you to reflect on the journeys of your own families to see how far we've come. Just a, a brief snapshot of my family. My grandmother was as smart as a whip, but she was told she could never study medicine because, quote, it wasn't becoming of a woman. Fast forward 20 years to my mother, who was very stubborn and pig-headed and feisty like me, and she was the first female courier driver in Queensland. They had a photo in the Courier Mail, the newspaper in Brisbane, of her in her kitten heels in this uh, big beehive hairstyle, talking on the two-way in her little courier van. And the headline read, who would have thought women can drive after all? <laughs> So as you can see, there's been advancement in those 20 years, but still an environment of strict gendered roles, an absolute shock if a woman was doing something outside the box. 20 years on, because mum had me when she was uh, 19, there's me, full-time working woman who shares the household and child-rearing duties with my husband, genuinely 50-50, something that would have been pretty much unheard of many decades ago. And my eight-year-old daughter, who listens to all of my war stories about the battles fought and won and snorts with laughter when I tell her things like this and says, Mum, that's ridiculous. That didn't really happen. Don't be silly. <laughs> so it's lovely to look at how far we've come in those generations. I'm ashamed to admit that for the first 20 years of my career, I was the good girl. I'm sure a lot of you would know about the good girl syndrome. I never once asked for a pay rise. And I'm really embarrassed and ashamed to admit that, but it really speaks to some of the journeys that we're still going on, that we've been on, and some of the challenges we still face. I remember having one contract negotiation with a boss at Network 10, and I actually said to him, don't worry about giving me a pay rise. I feel privileged to have a job. I just like being here. <laughs> what an idiot. I mean, I know there's structural discrimination in the workplace. There are plenty of things that hold women back, but we have to admit that sometimes we hold ourselves back as well, or at least I have in my career. Working in television, though, for all of those decades gave me a heightened sense of discrimination against women in the workplace. I know every industry has different structural challenges, so the brief stories I'm going to tell now are things that happened to me, but I think there are parallels in each and every one of our industries. In fact, the discrimination in television was so endemic that it seemed normal. So when they said, you'll never make it as a newsreader because people think blondes are stupid, I said nothing. When they said, you'll probably do this job for a few years and then marry a nice businessman, you'll never have to work a day in your life again. Still, I said nothing. And when they said, ah, oh, look, you're getting a bit long in the tooth, maybe it's time you worked behind the scenes. Yep, I said nothing until one day when they said, well, now you've got kids, you won't want to come back to work, you'll want to be at home looking after your babies. You can just tell the public you're quitting for family reasons. This had happened to all of my female friends in the industry before I was given this speech. And most of them had either been sidelined onto less powerful reporting roles, for example, not politics, but health or the family round, generally less paid, less powerful, less high profile in the bulletin, 
or they'd been told they couldn't work part-time or job share. In fact, one of my friends 20 years ago did a business case, productivity study, on how she could come back and job share with another woman who was a female political reporter in Melbourne at uh, Channel 10 at the time. And the boss said, look, it looks good on paper, but I'm not going to do it. And the only reason I'm not going to do it is because we've never done it before and I'm frightened it won't work. <laughs> I'm actually delighted to say this same friend I saw in Melbourne uh, a couple of days ago now works at Channel 7 down there, and she has finally got this job share arrangement after all these years, working with another reporter, three days one week, two days the next, works out really well for her. So these are some of the battles that are fought and won. But every other one of my friends in the industry left the industry because it was too difficult to be able to do it with children. It was seen that work and family were mutually exclusive. So when this speech was given to me, I realised I could no longer sit still, shut up and pretend that everything was okay. It was a fight I had to have, not just for myself, but for all women. Taking legal action against discrimination was unequivocally the best thing I have ever done. It made executives think twice about the long-held practice of simply sacking pregnant women. It started a national conversation about the treatment of women in the workplace. And it allowed me personally to diversify at a time when the mass media was fragmenting. New media is the perfect platform for female empowerment. Women are creating social media empires, challenging the dinosaurs of old. Businesses are using technology to allow women and men to work more flexibly. And globally, the pace of change is gaining speed because activists can share ideas and work collectively. New perspectives are discovered, people are connected and passions are ignited. Which speaks to our theme today, discover, connect, ignite. This will mean different things to each and every one of you. To me, it means discover who you really are and what you want to do with your life. Connect with other women, whether that's by networking or finding a mentor or sponsor. Then my favourite bit, being an activist from way back, <laughs> ignite. Feed that fire in your belly. Speak out for yourself and for all women. Blaze a trail. Demand your worth and be a role model for all of those around you. This is what leadership is about. This is the path to true and lasting equality. We have some incredible trailblazers here today. I can't wait to hear from all of them because we will learn something from each and every one of you in the room as well as from the people on the stage. What I like about She Leads is the focus on practical, tangible, quantifiable ways to remove the roadblocks to leadership. These are structural barriers that need to be broken down. I hasten to add that leadership means many things to many people. You're showing it by simply being here today. Companies are showing it by instituting flexible work for both men and women. Companies like one of my employers, I'm in a wonderful situation where most of my bosses these days are women. I'm kind of like my own boss, but most of my other bosses, the people that I write for and work for are women, which is tremendous. But one of my male bosses is at Sky News, and he's fabulous with flexibility for women and for, for men. One of my male colleagues there has just changed his hours because he wants to spend more time with his kids. And these are the conversations we have to have ongoing. Another company that's fantastic with flexibility, work-life balance for women and men is PricewaterhouseCoopers, which I'm delighted to say is the principal partner of this conference. During the, the breaks, please visit their partner space out in the foyer. They want to hear your thoughts on women's leadership in Australia. Also, thanks to our online partner, one of my, fam my favourite websites, Women's Agenda, one of these great sites that's getting women's voices out there. It's tremendous. Our live stream partner, Newcast, and creative partner, Goosebumps. Now, we'll be filming and live streaming the conference, and a professional photographer will be taking some happy snaps. Feel free to take your own photos, uh, but please turn off your flashes and stay seated while the panels are happening so there's no distraction. Our hashtag is SheLeads2015, and we'd love you to blog and tweet as much as possible. Evaluation forms are also on your tables. Uh, we want to improve the conference experience, so please give us your honest feedback. And if you have any questions, please ask anyone wearing the crew name tag. <laughs>